Is it coming up for everyone? Not quite yet. Great. Not yet, Greg. All right, we'll try it again. Um, host disabled participant screen sharing. Chris, could you allow me? Yes, to that would be helpful, wouldn't it? Um, already. That's your help. I am the host by the looks. All right, let's grab my screen over here, number two. All is working well. You should be seeing a red screen now. Advanced yes. voice evacuation programming. And I thank Dale for the introduction. We'll get started on this right now. So with our fire alarm systems, we have on the audio systems, we have items such as the V-series panels or the command center panels. Along with that for audio, we have the VBM or voice box with microphone. In addition to that, we have what's known as the VB or just the voice box with no microphone. Okay, so in each of those units, we can have a AMP80, the AV AMP80 audio amplifier. So when we take a look at this unit here, it, it can be set up in two different, two different ways, whether it's a hardwired or a software driven. In any case, it is two independent 25 volt RMS 40 watt amplifiers. They can be wired either class A or class B. They do use a common message chip, so whatever happens to circuit number one happens to circuit number two. Now it is programmable for a one for one backup. Again, it would be a 40 watt with a 40 watt backup, or if you don't need to have the backup, you can have two 40 watt taps. Again, I stress what happens in one happens in two. Now the little red arrow is the jumper, where if you do set it up for 45 and you set it up for one for one backup, this is how you can do the manual test and demonstrate the failure of amplifier one to an HJ should you need to. As we said earlier, there's a hardwired version and a software version. The software for both of those is built into every single amplifier. It just depends on how you add it into the system, whether it gets invoked as a hardwired unit or a software driven unit. You can add multiple amplifier applications such as AMP 80s and VBs, and you can have those with the boost feature. Now on board, every single amplifier is a Form C set of trouble contacts. In some cases you may need it, in some cases you may not, and we'll cover those shortly. Now we also supervise the microphone input. Over here is the microphone input as I'm circling it with my mouse. We supervise that for a placement of the ribbon cable going out to the microphone. Should that become unplugged, it does in fact cause a trouble on board the amplifier, which will report to the panel as a trouble. Now, in addition to that, these amplifiers can be programmed for up to two messages or up to 16 messages. Two messages for the hardwired amplifier and up to 16 messages in the software-driven amplifier. Now, this unit is mounted onto an integral metal plate. The metal plate is also used. We have to keep it in place because it is used for heat dissipation on the, for the heat sink for the amplifiers themselves. And lastly, they do require a power supply, a PSU-6, that is a power supply and charger in order to run these units. So on the amplifier, there's a couple of things. There's the dip switches for setting the addresses and there's also the LEDs. Okay, we'll cover them really quickly. So on the LEDs, we have a TX light, an HB light, an AMP1 and an AMP2, followed by a 40V and a USB. Now, let me explain what these are for. So you have the TX, the transmit. This is flashing when we are sending data. So if we create a, an amplifier message set and we're transferring this into the amplifier, this light will be flashing. If a heartbeat light, that is the processor, the microprocessor on board, and that's normally flashing at a slow pulse rate. You have the A1 and the A2, or amplifier and amp one and amplifier two. These are your two 40 watt taps. Normally they would be on steady if, if the amplifier is active. It would flash if the amplifier is in trouble or if it's shorted. So if you lost the inline resistor, it would be flashing, or if it was shorted out, it would be flashing. Otherwise, it's going to be off on if the thing is active. Now, coupled along with that is something called the 40V test. And what the 40V test is, we said that this amplifier can be set up with backup. Now it does this all the time, whether it's set up with backup or not, but the way that the unit works is, is it goes into its 40V test, it's testing the integrity of both amplifiers. If we set up an amplifier with a 40 watt, with a 40 watt backup, this is where it would detect the failure of amp number one, and through a set of relays on board, 
would flip over and route the amplifier from, from tap number two down onto, app, uh, onto tap number one and play it out in that. Okay, and the last item is the USB. Now that would normally be off, but it will be on when we connect in our USB from our fire panel to our laptop, if you will, and that indicates the, four, the five volts is there in order to you know, make the communications. Now the next item has to do with the dip switching. Now and this is specifically for the intelligent amplifier. In the hardwired version, there is no dip switch setting to it. You just leave the switches alone. But in the system here, in the intelligent version, we can put up to 16 amplifiers on a fire panel. Or it could also go onto a pen unit. Let me just quickly explain what a pen is. Pen is, is, is explained as a peripheral expansion network node. Think of it as a fire panel with nothing but a P bus, meaning fire panel being able to talk to its daughter cards. That's really all it is. And the idea behind it is it's a networkable item like an ampli like a uh, enunciator that can connect to a style four or style seven network and gives us the ability to put these units out in the field and communicate to them. Now, if we notice that there are four dip switches, the dip switches have values that double, one, two, four, and eight. And if anyone's quick with math, you'll realize that one, two, four, and eight adds up to only 15. Now, we wouldn't necessarily uh, address a pull station or a smoke detector as address zero, but motherboards talking to daughter cards, we can certainly have an address of a card as zero. That's legit. Okay, so if we have a zero plus the 15, that gives us our 16 cards. Now, in hardwired, I would just to show you the comparison between the two units. This is a hardwired amplifier, exactly the same as the software driven, but we do things a little bit differently. So, in the hardwired, we said early, we can do as many as two messages. There are three relay trigger inputs. Now, relay input number one, or in one in ground over here on the, on the right hand side of the board, in one is message number one, in two is message number two. In three is the boost mode. Now what happens in the boost mode is over here on the right hand side down by the transformers, we take a signal, a 25 volt signal, bring it in over here, and we can take that signal and, and regenerate it at 40 watts and send it out on each of the speakers. That's what the boost mode is. Now we also supervise the microphone, again, for placement. And if we happen to key the microphone and leave it keyed for more than 180 seconds, it will cause a trouble on the fire panel. The way to reset it is very quickly, just release the microphone, starts the, type, starts the, uh, the timer all over again, and we start that off. Okay, now as far as the messages and their prioritization, the microphone itself is the highest level of priority, followed by the boost mode. And then we have message number one, which is the third message, and finally, the message number two, which is the lowest priority. And that's how you would set things up if you were doing your, your evacuation message, maybe message number one, and an all clear is message number two. Okay, now we supervise the amplifier via the form C set of contacts that are on board. Remember I said earlier, sometimes we're going to use it, sometimes we're not. Our form C set of contacts is here on the right hand side. Whoops, sorry about that. We get back to it. So we've, we've modified when we, and we supervise the contacts over here. You can connect that to maybe the input point on the motherboard or a monitor point out in the field. Okay, so now we want to do is compare that to the 45 version of the amplifier. Looks exactly the same, doesn't it? But we're going to invoke it differently and it's going to do something different for us. So in this case, the first thing is, is we have three different types of intelligent amplifiers. The first one is a microphone bus amplifier. We tell it that it's a microphone bus and it's dedicated to becoming an analog microphone bus. We send your voice on copper wire up and into and out of every single amplifier in the field so that you can talk to them. The second item is a remote microphone bus amplifier. On some places you may have something where you need LOCs, local area operating console. Doing any kind of a military inst installation, you'll know what I'm talking about. Or you might even have it where you have dual command centers in a building. And we have several of those where they, the building is large enough that they have a, a command center on one side of the, of the building and they have another one on the other, secondary location. And then the third item that that amplifier can be would be a floor or an area amplifier. Now in each of those kinds of amplifiers, you can put as many as 16 messages in them. They are customized uh, for prioritization, although default is message number one is the highest priority on so on and so forth up to 16. But we can set those differently if we need to. 
Sometimes military installations require them to be a little bit different. Now we also take into consideration with this, the intelligent version of it, is the advanced perfect sync control. Now with the advanced perfect sync control, there are 282 485 buses that were taken into consideration. The first one is the P bus on the panel or pen. The second one is the network. That would be the net four card or the net seven card. On each of these, we send a sync pulse out. So if we have multiple panels, we're sending a sync pulse out and that sync pulse is then in turn fired down onto the P bus. And what it does is it times up every single amplifier in the system to turn on and activate. And if we use a common message set in every single amplifier, every single amplifier will be activating at the same time, sounding as if it's a bulk amplifier, one, one source, all the amplifiers regenerating, when in fact that's not the case, each of the amplifiers is generating its own tone at its own location, and a single fail will be just the amplifier that fails. So we do, again, we supervise the microphone for the placement, same thing as the hardwired version. And we do have to put a power supply charger. However, this time when we do the power supply charger, we don't necessarily need to add a monitor module to supervise it. In the hardwired version of the amplifier, we used input one to trigger message one. In the software version, we switch that around. It no longer becomes a trigger point. It becomes a monitor point. And so with an amplifier, an intelligent amplifier, we don't need another monitor module. We wire the dry contacts of its power supply to in one and ground, and it becomes a monitor point. And I'll show you that where that comes up on the amplifier in a little bit. So again, we set up the dip switches to set them up for the, the uh, individual addresses off of those units. So each one could have an address from zero to 16 and every panel can have that many as well. Now the amplifier is supervised and controlled via the P bus, via the 485 P bus on the fire panel or the pen unit. So it's not like we need to run something else special to it. All we have to do is bring the network cabling to it and the P bus communications to it and when you bring your voice out to the unit so that you can retransmit your voice. So the next thing is there's some tools that are required to do the programming of the PBUS 485 amplifier. You cannot do this in the faceplate of the panel. It has to be done with the two different tools. The first tool is the AXIS config tool. And the second tool is the AXIS AV amplifier tool. We use the AXIS config tool to add amplifiers to a site-specific program and we determine whether it's going to be a mic bus amplifier, a remote mic bus amplifier, or an area amplifier. In addition to that, we add a switch card or switch cards to instruct the amplifiers how to work if we want them to do something specific. And we'll do that later. We also write programs to instruct the amplifiers which of the 16 messages to play and when to play them. Now on the amplifier tool, this is where we set up the amplifier for intelligent control. One way it can be is a hardwired amplifier, or we can set it up for an intelligent version, and I'll show you how that gets invoked. The next thing we do is we set up the amplifier for either having a one-for-one -one backup, that would be a 40 watt with a 40 watt backup, or the amplifier is just gonna be two 40 watt taps doing exactly the same thing with no backup. The other thing that we do here is we load the specific messages into the amplifier. So we create our own messages as we need, um, you may have it it's just in straightaway English. Maybe you need to create something that is English and Spanish. You can create your own and then put that into the system as well. And the last thing we do is when you do create your own messages, this is where you would import custom messages that you've made. Now, there are a couple of things about importing messages that you must maintain. We use, it's not our program, but you can find it out on the web. It's called the Audacity tool. With that, there are some very specific things that it does require. It's an 8,000 hertz. Um, signal, it's a mono signal, it's a 16-bit, and it's a dot wave file. A lot of stuff to keep in mind, but uh, the little booklet, uh, you know, in the manual will show you how to put that together. So the first thing I want to look at is the AX series config tool. This is our fire panel programmer tool, and there's a couple of things about that that we're going to cover. First is going to be looking at the peripheral bus. On the peripheral bus, these are intelligent amplifiers. We're going to add them in as intelligent amplifiers. We're also going to add a switch card. In addition to that, we're going to go look at the patterns. And this is how we tell an amplifier not just to turn on. Think of it like a jukebox. The jukebox is turned on, but you have to select 
what record to play in which side of the record you want it to play. Same idea. And then beyond that, we have is the, the cause and effect output groups. That's how we're going to tell it when to activate. Not every alarm is going to make it activate because we're doing a selective, a selective signal three floor building. It's so really quick. Let me flip over here and show you what I was looking at. Find it real quick. And here's our amplifier, our, uh, our fire panel program. I've got it set up with three floors of selective evac. I've got uh, a dozen or half a dozen um, full stations. I've got um, you know, eight or nine uh, smoke detectors and I've got them broken apart into zones. And on the zones, I have first floor zone devices, second floor zone devices and third floor, just so we can keep things straight away. Now, the next thing we said we were gonna do is look at the peripheral bus. So here's the peripheral bus over here below the main fire pin. So let's take a quick look. I'll flip back over to the page. Here in just a moment. All right, so we said we we're gonna to go to that. So base programming on that, we're gonna, it's a three floor building with three smokes, two pull stations per floor. We're gonna add a switch card to the peripheral bus. This is the AX ASW16 switch card. So let's take a quick look and see how we do that. We're on the peripheral bus. We come to the lower left corner and the very first item in here is the switch PD module. It has address locations of 26 to 41. So I'm just gonna highlight it blue and double click at address 26. So there's our switch card added to the system. Next item, add four amplifiers. One of them will be for the microphone bus. Second one will be for floor one, third one for floor two, and the fourth one will be for floor three. We'll flip back over and we'll add those. When we look at the device selector way at the bottom of it, the last item is the AV amp. So I'm going to highlight that. Notice that it's going to jump to 149 up in this location here, because that's the first available location. I'm going to highlight it, add the mic bus, add the floor one, add the floor two, add the floor three. And all I'm doing is highlighting it in the lower left and double clicking the card location. Okay, now there's two ways. We can continue to look at this, seeing all of the used and unused. But notice this little carrot right here. If I hover over this, and click on the, the down arrow, I can look at all addresses, used addresses, and unused addresses. I'm gonna select the used addresses. I can see my switch card and my four amplifiers. Okay, let's tab back over again, take a quick look and see what the next tool task is. We need to set up a signal pattern for evac message, alert message, and all clear message. And then we have to change from the standard pattern and make it into an audio parrot, uh, pattern and verify what message it's going to play. Now, if we were turning a relay on, we would simply say, turn it on. But in an audio, we're going to turn the amplifier on and we have to choose which of the 16 messages it's going to play. So it's a two-step process here. So we have to alter our patterns. Our patterns is the speaker that looks like it's making noise. So when we click on it here, before we started this class, I went through and added just some labels because it takes a little bit of time to put that stuff in. First floor, second floor, third floor, I thought I would just stay in line with these ones, twos, and threes. So on, on pattern number 11, I said, well, I'll make that my evac message. We look down in the lower left corner under the signal pattern details. First thing I wanna look at is the used for. I've already given it a name, but I wanna look at the used for. It currently says standard. If I click on the standard, you'll notice the other option is audio. When I click on audio, notice a few things change down below. First thing it says, I'm gonna delay for no seconds. Basically, I want you to just turn on. But what message do I wanna play? So when we look at it here, you can see it's already selected message number one. Okay, so pattern, pattern 11 is going to play message number one. So when we ask it to choose pattern 11, it's gonna turn on and play message whatever is in the amplifier's message number one. So the alert one, that's our second message. So we'll do the same thing. Click on it, change it from a standard, make it an audio. Come down to the bottom down here. We don't wanna play the alarm message again. We wanna play the alert message. And we may or may not use this, I'm not sure. Third item is the all clear, because we know we wanna put an all clear message in. Again, it's straightforward. I just change it to an audio. I don't wanna play alarm. I don't wanna play alert. I wanna play the all clear. Okay, so that sets up the patterns as to which message of the three that we're going to put into the amplifier that it's going to select. All right, let's flip back over and see what else. So we just set up all of these. Next thing, we need to create output groups per floor. Okay, now one of the things that I did when I look at this, the output groups of the speaker that has the two blue arrows pointing at it. 
When we click on that, because I did everything in the 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 11, 12, 13, I'm going to do 11, 12, and 13 for my output groups here. Now, the first time I'm going to do is I'm going to right-click in the big open area, and I'm going to add an output group. Make it number 11. And this is floor one audio. Okay, now notice down below here it says used for. Under the used for, it currently says standard. We're working with audio. So if I click on the standard, notice I have an audio output. A okay. standard would just be simply turning it on. Audio will turn it on and choose a message. Okay, so we say all right to that. Now the next thing is do is we get to we get to choose the event type here. What's going to make the input? What is the input type that we're going to use? Now, the reason I set up, and this is where it works very easily when we set up zone, individual zones for floors or zone ranges for floors. I did zone one for the first floor, zone two for the second floor, zone three for the third floor. There's no reason that says that you couldn't do zones one to 10 to be on the first floor, 11 to 20 to be the second floor, 21 to 30 to be the third floor, and just put any of your devices, depending on what it is, in those individual zones. But to make it easy for us, I just did the one, two, and three. So what I do is I click on zone range. Now it's gonna ask me what is the zone range that I wanna look at. Now here's, here's the part that you have to spin your brain around and think about. Think of this output group that you're writing as you're, you're the, from the point of view of the amplifier. I am the amplifier on the first floor. And in selective signaling, we typically do floor of the incident, floor below the incident, and floor above the incident. So I am going to write the first floor equation. If I have zone one, which is the first floor, if I have a zone one alarm, do I want that amplifier on the first floor to turn on? Again, I'll say it again. If I have an alarm on the first floor, do I want the amplifier on the first floor to turn on? Yes, I do, because that's the floor of the incident. Now, how about if I have a second floor alarm? Well, if I have a second floor, the first floor would be the one below it, wouldn't it? Seems logical, that's the one floor down below it. But what if I had a third floor alarm? That's not the one directly, I'm sorry, not below, above it. That's not the one directly above it, that's two floors away from it. So I would think that we would not want a third floor alarm to activate the first floor amplifier. So in this case, it would be a zone one to zone two, a first floor alarm or a second floor alarm. Play message number one for alarm purpose and say okay. Okay, so that sets up the one for floor one. Now we'll do the second floor. And I'll put group number 12 for. Again, we'll change it from a used for from, an, from a standard to an audio. I want you to think about this one, same zone range again. Now we're on the second floor of the building. What if I have a first floor alarm? Do I want that to activate? It's the floor above it, correct? If I have a second floor alarm, a zone two alarm, that's the floor of it. What if I have a third floor alarm? I'm on the second floor, but if I have a third floor alarm, now I'm one floor above it. So that's the floor below, the floor of, and the floor, and the floor above. Above, below, and of. So I would say in this case, zone one to zone three alarm. Okay, and then finally, you can see how the beginning of the development of the pattern begins to show up here. So the next thing is, I'm gonna add the third floor alarm. That would be floor three alarm, floor audio. Change it from a standard to make it an audio. Now in this case, would we want that third floor amplifier to turn on if the alarm was on the third, if the third floor was in alarm? That seems to me as though the, the first floor amplifier is two floors away, correct? So we wouldn't want that one to turn on. I would think the second floor, and the third floor. Now, if we had a fourth floor, it would be two, three, and four. And you can see how this would go. And the next one, if we had one more floor, it would be three, four, five. And it just goes in groups of three all the way up through the building. So it's very easy to put together. So there's our three output groups that are going to control our amplifiers. So we have a few more things that we have to do to our amplifiers. So let me flip over here. We've created our output groups. Next thing. We need to alter the amplifier type for each amplifier. One of them needs to be the microphone bus. Three of them need to be floor amplifiers, and we need to select what area they're going to be in. Okay, we need to designate the area. So let's flip it back over again, take a quick little look. Our amplifiers reside on the peripheral bus. 
Well, here they are here. I don't care which one of the one, 149, 150, 151, or 152, choose one of them, touch it, and then what we want to do is we want to hit the magnifying glass. So earlier we said about the amplifier and the monitor point for the power supply. So we have an, an atom here. You can see there's an amplifier. It's a 149.0, 149.1, and 149.2. 149.0 is the monitor point for the power supply. The dot one is speaker tap number one, and the dot two is speaker tap number two. Okay. So the first thing we needed to do was we needed to select one to be the microphone amplifier. And why not start with the low number so we will. So down here in the lower left corner underneath the point details, we can see that it has a used for here. Underneath the used, it says that it's a floor amplifier. When we click on floor amplifier, you'll see that you have some other options here. Mic bus or remote bu mic bus. We're going to choose mic bus. That's how things changed over here. We got rid of the output group that was associated with it. We don't have to worry about anything else with that amplifier. Let's go down to the 150 card. Why don't we make this as the first floor amplifier? So this is a floor amp. What area is it? This is why I kept the ones, the twos, the threes, the 11s, the 12s, the 13s all together to make my life easy to remember. My audio area number one is my first floor. So there's my first floor amplifier. What happens to tap number one also happens to tap number two. You'll notice I didn't make any changes to the dot two. All I did was one. What happens to the first one happens to the second. So now I'll go look at the 151. That's another floor. This is the second floor. So that'll be number two, area number two. Notice it changes that one. And of course, the third one, the 152, will be the third floor. And that takes care of that. Okay. Now the next thing we have to do is work on the output groups that are going to control these. Okay. So what I can do is I'm just going to highlight one of these, and then I'm going to hit the magnifying glass. And I'll hit it one more time. Right click in the big area and do the quick edit on one of the amplifiers. And notice we have five columns of items here. Address, location text, zone that it's applied to, and the output group. And the one we're interested in is the zone, the, the, the column with the output group. Now, if we think back a couple of minutes, we said that the 150 is the first floor amplifier. Up here, underneath the blue, the speaker with the two blue arrows on it, we wrote three output groups. We kept them fairly straight and fairly straightforward. 11 for the first floor, 12 for the second floor, 13 for the third floor. So I'm thinking about that. I want this amplifier to be controlled by output group number 11. I think that's the one. I type in the 11 and click off someplace else. Notice that it is the first floor audio. So we applied the right one. We kept the two together. What happened to one happened to two. Down here, we would think the next one in line would be output group number 12. And then finally, output group number 13. So now we have the output groups controlling those amplifiers. Okay, we don't have to worry more about this screen, so we'll close the screen for the moment. And let's flip back over here and see what else it wants us to do. We did the three floors, we designated the area, then we applied the output group to each one of them. We already took care of that. Next thing is we need to program the switch card. That's the switch card on the front of the fire panel so that it makes the amplifiers do some work. Besides just going into alarm and having them activate, we would like to set up a switch that does all page and all clear. And then we want to be able to page individual floors. So if I want to talk to the third floor, I'm going to set a button up so that I can only talk to the third floor. So let's take a flip over here and show you how you do that. So notice up above here, the 149, you had the 26 card. It doesn't matter which one of these that you touch, any one of them, touch it, hit the magnifier once, hit the magnifier a second time, and here's the big switch card in the system. Now, if you notice as I'm moving around here, you can see some LEDs light up, you can see buttons light up, but you can also see these rectangle areas. Okay, what we were concerned with is the rectangle area. Yeah, sure, I can <clears throat> a button up to do something or an LED to do something, but, in the magic of the fire panel, if we click on the big rectangle, there are some application functions that work for us. We don't have to create things. So once I do that, notice down here we have an application function. When I click on the down arrow, there are two possibilities in there. Set it up for audio or set it up for fire phones. We're not doing fire phones, so we'll click on the audio. Now when we click on the audio, you'll notice under here for the used for, you'll notice that there are three categories of items in here. We can play, we can page, or we can request control, which has to do with command center and control, not in control. In this case, we said that we wanted to page all. So if we look 
in here in the second category, it says page all areas. Okay, all I have to do is click on the page all areas. Area number one is one of all, area two is one of all, area three is one of all. All of the software programming for page all is done. That's all we have to do. Next one we're gonna do is we're gonna come over to the big, over to the right hand side and I wanna page area number one, area number two, area three. And the last thing I'm gonna do is go in, I'm gonna put in an all clear message. So what I can do here is on these is I don't have to go through and finalize a complete switch all at once. I can go in and set these over and then come back to them and modify them. So all I'm gonna do is simply come in here and click. I'm gonna make it an application as audio. And I'll do that for each of these just because it makes it look quicker for me. And then we'll come back and finish them up. This will be my all clear button over here. Okay, so over here we said we wanted to page area number one. We'll come down here to the used for. We don't want to play to an area. We want to page an area. There it is there. We click on page the area. and It's going to ask us what area do you want to page. This one defaulted out in area number one. In fact, they all default to area number one. Okay, so there's the first floor. Everything to do with the LEDs and the button, that's all the magic of the panel is doing all of that. Next time we'll come down, we're going to page area, not number, not number one, but number two. I can swipe across it and make it a number two. So whatever amplifier is designated as an, eight, an area two amplifier, when we push this button, the A2 amplifier is going to turn on. And do note that we can have multiple amplifiers in area two, area one, any one of them. And I'll do the same thing for the third floor, page, area three. Let's set up those right there. All the, again, all the functions of the LEDs and the switch, all that is taken care of. And then finally, we wanted to make this button, we wanna to play to every area, the all clear message. So we wanna play not to a specific area, we wanna to play to all areas, not the alarm message, but the all clear message. So now the pro now all of the programming is taken care of with regard to the to the fire panel itself. So let's take a quick little flip over here and see what else it's asking us. We want to save the program, check the design, and then upload the configuration into the panel. Okay. So save the program. Just click here and do a save. We can click on the word assistant, do a check design, and just ask it to run the check. Basically, it looks like when it comes back, doesn't mean that I don't have a third floor smoke detector on the zone one, but what it's telling me is, is my software is reasonably certain that it's going to do what I want it to do. My zones are all applied correctly. My output groups are applied correctly. Everything looks like it's good. And again, all I have to do is load to the fire panel and that software will be pushed into it. I'm gonna close this report, not save it. And then we'll flip back over and see what our configuration task tools has, has us does next next. So the next thing we're going to look at is the amplifier programmer tool. So we're programmed the fire panel. Now we're going to have to tell the amplifier how it's going to work. Remember before it said, hey, it's going to be an intelligent or a hardwired. What messages are in it? Those things are we're going to choose at this point in time. Okay. So one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to click and add a panel. Because if we clicked over here where it says add an AV amp, this would invoke a hardwired amplifier. And here we're adding an amplifier to the fire panel. So let's quickly flip over and let me find my amplifier tool. And here's my amplifier tool. And again, if you see here when I click on AV amp, notice that AV amp to panel or AV VB to panel, they're gray. And the other two are straight away, they're not going to a panel, they're colored up. So if I add here, these would become hardwired units. But what it wanted us to do was to click on add it to a panel. And we're gonna add panel with integrated audio. Click on panel with integrated audio. Now here we got a plus sign next to it. Now let's take a look over onto our next task list and see what it wants us to do. So it wants us to add a panel with integrated audio. We just did that. And then we want to click on the plus sign next to the panel. And when we do, we want to touch the screwdriver and wrench icon. Okay. Now well, let's flip over and take a look at this. So there's the plus sign next to the panel. When we click on that, notice there's the screwdriver and wrench and there's the AV amp. So we click on the screwdriver and wrench. There are three option boxes here. The first one, notice it says standalone. It does not have a check mark in it. That is an indication that this amplifier is an intelligent version amplifier. Now I would like to make this unit a backup mode. I want it to be 40 watts with a 40 watt backup. That's why we'll put a check mark in there. 
Now with backup, the amplifier's power supply is capable of supporting 80 watts worth of usage. Now when we put the panel into backup mode, do we ever use 80 watts? We don't, we only use 40 watts because 40 watts are going to sit there waiting for the, for the, the other one to fail. And that being said, that's why this option is here is because we could have two amplifiers tied to one power supply. In this case, we don't, we'll just take the check mark out of it. Okay, so that sets up our amplifier. This will invoke the firmware that is going to be the intelligent version versus the hardware version. It will tell the amplifier that it's going to have backup mode. It's going to tell that the amplifier doesn't, it does not share a power supply. Okay, we do a flip over again. We've just done all of that. Next thing we want to do is we want to touch the AV amp. We want to add a new message number one for EVAC. And that would be a pre-tone, a female voice, trailing tone. Add a message number two as an alert. I'm not sure what we'll add in there. And we want to add a message number three, which is an all clear, typically a male voice. Okay. We hit click on the screwdriver wrench. Now what we'll do is click on the word AV amp. We click on the word AV amp and notice we have some items over here in the big right section. Now what's going to happen in this column over here, you'll notice when we start adding messages to it, there'll be like a little reel-to-reel -reel tape with a number in the middle of it. The number indicates the message number. Okay, and through here we can have as many as three sections to every message. We don't necessarily need to do all three, but you could have. Okay, so in this case here, I want to add a pre-tone. So those that were down in the very lower left-hand corner that falls underneath the tones. We go way to the bottom of this. I am looking for something that might be, uh, because we're doing this thing now with the 520 hertz, I'm looking for something here that would be a 520 hertz T3 wave, square wave. There it is there, 520 T3, that's a temporal three. Now I can right click on this item right here and click play. And that's what the message, that's what I would like to put in. So what I do is I grab this where it's yellow, I'm gonna hold my left mouse button down. I'm gonna drag up right here underneath audio section one below where it says file name and then right in the section right here and let it go. Bring it up, let it go, okay? So right now you see there's the reel-to-reel -reel tape with message number one. So I said that I wanted to have a pre-tone, there's my pre-tone, and then I said I wanted to have a voice message. And typically voice messages are female voice messages for fire alarm. In this case, that falls underneath fire evacuation. We'll click on the fire evacuation. Now in here, I'm looking for something fairly short. We do have elevators in this building because we did say the smoke detector was an elevator lobby device. And female evac number 10 looks like a good one. I can right click on it and do play. This was a, that was a pre-built a pre message. So I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab that message and I'm gonna bring it up here in the, in, the, in the blue line below audio section number two under the word file name, because I want it to be part of message number one. Again, hold the left button down, bring it up. You'll see that the box turns yellow and let it go. Now, depending on where you're located and what AHJ, what he wants, will determine whether you are simply going to do this kind of a message, which does happen in many locations where they play a get your attention, and a female voice, and they just keep repeating this. So I'm gonna play this one round, play that one round, and this repeat here, the infinity sign on the repeats, and just continuously play this over and over again. Okay, that's perfectly fine if that's what you wanna use for a message, what your HJ says. But what if your HJ says, no, I want you to play a, a T3, and I want you to play the message, the female voice three times, and then after that, I want you to just do a 520 hertz forever. Don't stop, just keep playing the 520 hertz forever. Well, we can do that. Now, we already used the 520 hertz up here. So this is thing called most recents. If I click on the most recents, there it is. Sure enough, fine, I find it right down here. So if I wanted to play that, I'll put that right up in there. I'm gonna play this one round to get your attention. Then the female voice is gonna do it three rounds. And then after that, not one round here, but if I hit the little down arrow, I just wanna play that section forever, for infinity. So that'll be a get your attention, beep, beep, beep. Voice message three times, and then beep, beep, beep forever. Just keep repeating beep, 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 beep and keep going. So now we said we we're gonna put some sort of an alert message in the system, because we have the second message was an alert. And I'll just add one into it. And notice that you have alerts here. I'm just gonna grab, I think maybe the female alert too, because it's fairly small, I'll just drag that up. 
Now I don't put it anywhere in this line at all. I'm gonna drop it right below file name audio section one, but below, and that'll be our message number two. Okay, and in this case, I just wanted to just keep playing whatever this message is over and over again in the building. And then last but not least is we wanted to put an all clear message in. So I click on the all clears. I've got a mail number one. I'm just, it's very short and sweet. And I'll just drag that up and that'll be my message number three. You can see she just, he just keeps repeating himself over and over and over again. So we just did for the amplifiers, we told the amplifier that it was an intelligent amplifier. It's set up for one for one backup. It does not have a common power supply. It's going to have three messages in it. There's our first one, our second one, and our third one. And we are using approximately 5% of the memory. So what we have to do in order to put this information into the amplifiers, we take our USB cable, hook it up to our laptop, hook it up to the amplifier. There's nothing you have to do to the amplifier. All you have to do is click on, see the tree here with the green, the green tree with a circle around the base of it, it says upload. When you click on that, what you'll notice in the lower right hand corner is the progress bar. It'll queue up and it'll send these messages, these wave files into the amplifier, into those slot locations, i.e. it's putting it into the jukebox, puts them in those locations. So when the fire panel says amplifier, turn on and play message number three, this is the message that's in it. Now I recommend on a building, as I said earlier, you put the same message set in every single amplifier, unless you're doing something specific in a location where you need to do it differently. If you put the same message set in every single amplifier, this syncing the message check marks right here, this is what dictates that sync pulse out on the network to tell all of these messages to play the message to in sync. Basically, cue yourself up, and then we'll all start at the same time. And what can happen with this is if you happen to interrupt the message as it's going, the syncing, the syncing pulse will automatically, approximately three to five rounds, the amplifier will catch up and get back in sync again. Okay, so let's flip it over here and take a look and see what my next thing was. We added all of these items. The next item was we, we did adjust the repeats as we needed, and then we're going to connect it. We said we're going to connect to the amplifier and send the message. So one of the things we talked about earlier had to do with the microphone bus. Now this is the one in the, the fire panel. This is actually speaker circuit number one on the amplifier. So it's wired class B, which means we have an end of line resistor somewhere up in the field. So we're gonna come out of B plus and B minus. And what you do is if you look at the amplifiers is you, um, I think they're like yellow, yellow, white, and black transformers. And these are the input sides, the audio input, the boost mode side. Get your voice out into every amplifier you bring it out, bring it into audio input one and come out of input one and go into input two come out and go on to your next one. In this case, it would be three of these, the first floor unit, the second floor unit, and the third floor unit. And way up on the third floor unit, the end line resistor, which would be a 4.7K resistor that used to reside here, would now be placed way up on that third floor unit. Or if you were wiring a class A, you just simply bring the class A wiring back and terminate it right here on the motherboard. <clears throat> so that for the most part kind of dictates what's going to happen with the selective audio. So the next thing we want to do is once we've got all of this program into the system is we want to do a quick little test. When we do our quick little test is we're going to have, and these, just so you know, there are slide in labels that go in through here. It's basically a Word document. You can take it, type it out, reprint it, cut it out, and then slide it back in again. So in this case here, if I click on the page all areas, what we'll see over here is the lights for floor number one, floor number two, and floor number three will turn on indicating that we're paging. Okay, next item is we want to do the clear, the all clear message. Same thing will happen again over here. The lights will turn on indicating that the amplifiers are active and the speakers are on and it'll play that message all clear over and over and over again until we hit reset or we push the button and toggle it back off again. Now, if we want to talk to over here, if we want a page to page to the first floor, we simply click on the button for page the first floor. And what will happen is the LED will kick on and we can just pick the microphone up Whatever was designated as an area one amplifier will be the only ones that'll turn on. Same thing would happen if we click on area number two, whatever that is, we'll light up the lights, those will kick on as well. And finally, for area number three, it does the same thing. And clearing these is either toggling them back off or doing a reset on the fire pit. Okay, so kind of a really quick over, over how we put it together. It's not... Um, very practical to actually show you, but uh, you know, on a, on a computer from miles and miles apart. But I wanted to give that to you if you wanted to look at uh, and kind of open the floor up if we had any questions.
Yeah, Greg. Yes. Gene, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Um, all right. I uh, back to your uh, amplifier uh, where you set up the messages and everything now. So if I wanted to, then feasibly I could take and copy that what I just prepared, add another amplifier, and just copy it and and repeat it. Couldn't I not do that? Make uh, it programming in, easier. In, in other words, when you set it, you set up that. I know where you set up the yeah here where we're, um so no, like I the amplifier, the amplifier here, you the can i copy and then can i do a paste special sure let's yeah see. so this is uh let's see enter the loop address um let's see loop address and paste to the devices this is four you do four to Six. Well, let's try. Um, um, let's see. I have to try to figure out what it's looking for us to. No, no. Let's think of the one fifty three. Well, I was thinking more yeah. of the way you set up when you yes, set up the amplifier with the messages. That's what I was thinking about. You know, in other words, you got that amplifier. You plugged the messages in. That was your first floor amplifier or whatever. Yeah. Right with the three messages. Now, yeah. could I just take that which I created and copy it to the next amplifier so I don't have to rebuild that every time? In other oh, words, yeah, once yes, I yeah, set up absolutely. one amplifier. Yep. In fact, that's what, uh, in fact, Gene, that's exactly what I did. Let me talk to myself over here. This is the third floor amplifier. I only made one amplifier, uh -huh. but you can take this, this amplifier, put it into the mic bus amplifier, put it into the floor one, the floor two, the floor three. And if you wanted to keep this and new job next week and you wanted to put it into that absolutely you could do that if it works for you there's no reason to say that you don't that you have to keep creating messages just messages and amplifiers. So I, once i get my one amplifier set up then i could just copy that uh, as many times as i need it with the messages because yeah. i'm going to be using the same messages yeah. right and we actually recommend that gene and the, the reason for that is that if you're using a, the common message for every single amplifier on a site when you looked at that as far as this the syncing of the device here, then each of the messages will be synchronized together. So if you happen to be walking down the stairwells, each floor will be synchronized together versus scattered, if you will. They they all will be synchronized together. And that's always a benefit for, for um, um, what do they call that? Um, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Intelligibility, I think it's called. Uh-huh. Yep, makes sense. Yeah. So if I had a 10 story building, then, uh, you know, we just did, we had the, you did uh, amplifier one in the three story building. If I wanted to add, I could just add the second floor amplifier, same settings, copy it. And that would make it real easy to just program a multi-story building like that. Wouldn't yes, it, it? Would. yes, it would. In fact, I think you're referring to um, LA law. LA yeah. Is that what we did out of LA law? LA law, we did one message set for the entire building and every single amplifier got the same message set. And that's like 30 nodes though, right? That's yes. Yep. Okay. I just, I'm just trying to think of, to program a, a, a huge high rise would be relatively simple in terms of uh, how much time I would have to allocate to do that. Sure. Yep. And with that particular job, we did do the, the zone ranges for him to make life easy because he was putting the backbone of the system in with no, and, and just so everybody knows this, when you do the zone application like we did, you actually don't even need to have a single pulse station smoke detector device in the field. You're just referencing the zone. So if you have to do the backbone of the system first, and then once the backbone is in place, then you go out and you start devicing up the floors, all you have to do is recall, well, okay, so uh, this floor needs to be you know, zone 10 for the 10th floor. Every device on, that I'm putting on here is a zone 10. You apply it to the 10 and then the backbone is already built in and, and there's nothing else you have to do other than just tell it that it's in that zone. And the audio works like it's supposed to. All right. Anything else I can help with you? All right. No, I'm gonna mute myself. Hey Greg, we just had a question come through related to uh, DGP setup when you've got DGPs with six amps in each one. Yep. Uh, can you talk a little bit about getting those set up and maybe sharing the power supplies and what would be different about that? 
Yeah, um, actually, it's, it would be the same setup because they have an amplifier um, in a horizontal. You know, the amplifier is in a vertical position, and the power supply is in a horizontal position. Uh, you, as we said earlier, you know, if you are using the amplifiers with backup, then you don't necessarily need to use six power supplies. Mm -hmm. You break those down into two and two and two, so you'd have two amplifiers and one. We talked about the in one and ground being the monitor point to fake that out so that if you have nothing attached to it, you just put a little jumper in place for it so it won't, it won't use it. But you're basically going to do is bring your DC power from your power supply into amp number one that you're going to do. Come out of that because it's a four pin terminal. Plus and minus in, plus and minus out. Come out of that and go down to the second amplifier, plus and minus in. And then, and then you've got your juice for it there. As far as the as far as the addressing on that, if you whatever you're attaching it to, you're just simply you know bring the P bus into the 485 inputs in and out in and out in and out, mm -hmm. either the pen or the panel itself, whatever's whatever you're hooking it to. Hey, Greg. One of the dip switches. Then there's it. You're saying there's one amp, one power supply for two amps. In that case, yes, you could use one power supply for two amps. Now, if you think about it, it's an 80 watt amplifier. And if you're doing backup, backup means that the second 40 watt amp never does anything. So you're only using 40 watts worth of the power. That's why you can double up amplifiers because, you know, double up amplifiers. So 40 from this amplifier, 40 from that. That's 80 watts. You're never overloading. Okay. Hey, Greg, I got a question. Go ahead, shoot. Uh, Greg, to the uh, microphone bus amplifier. Uh, yes. Let's say you already uh, program it using the uh, config tool. Uh, do you still need to uh, download all three messages using the uh, AVM tool or, or no? Um, the simple answer to that is yes. Although you don't have, you have, let's, let's put it this way. The simple answer is yes. And the reason I say yes is either that or you're going to have to recreate another message, another amplifier message with at least one message in it. Every amplifier has to have at least one message, whether it's hardwired or software. And the reason for that is when it does the 40V test, it uses that message to test the amplifier. So if there's no message in there when it does its test, the amplifier will go into trouble and stay in trouble. We'll never get it to clear. So as quickly as, as you know, is a minute and a half or you know, whatever it is, 5% of that is very quickly that it goes in. If it takes, you know, a you know, two minutes to visit the thing, plug in and upload the message. It's never going to use the message, but it's already got the message in it. So you're off and going. It's fairly quick. All right. Awesome. Okay. Anything else, Chris? Any other typed in questions? Nothing else that's typed. Um, anything else that we want to talk about before uh, we let us all get out and enjoy our afternoons? All right. Well, I really appreciate you guys taking the time with us this afternoon. Hopefully it was uh, useful for you. I know it's always great to uh, hear from the expert himself, Craig. Uh, so hopefully you guys got a lot out of it. Um, I'll send out the uh, materials from, from today's webinar as well as a survey um, just to get some feedback on uh, how things went today, either later tonight or early tomorrow morning. Um, if anybody, so I'll send all the materials out to all of the uh, emails that were on our invite. So in case anybody didn't get um, an invite to this event or um, it was shared to you with someone at your company, would you mind going in the chat? I have a Google Docs link. If you could just go ahead and enter in your name and email there, that'll just help me make sure that everyone gets all the materials from this. Um, and other than that, keep an eye out for another uh, newsletter announcing our next webinar. We'll try to get one going here soon. Um, and if anybody has any uh, topics they'd like to see covered, again, please let us know. We'd love to make these as useful for you guys as we can. Excellent. All righty. Well, thanks a lot, everyone. And I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. All right, man. Thanks for joining us. Take care, everyone. All righty.